Hello everybody, this is Jeff with EMB Nerd, and today we're going to be looking at some of the general settings for Chroma software. Um, right now I have Chroma Inspire opened up, as you can see up here. I believe the general settings are the same in Plus and Lux. So we'll go ahead and, and jump right into it. So to access the general settings, we're going to come up here to Tools, and we're going to go down to General Options. So the first tab that comes up here is the Environment tab. Um, I jump between inches and metric. I like to do everything in metric but sometimes I want to know the size of the design so I'll change it to inches and then that change it up, takes effect immediately so you can look at it in your design. The default style, um, right now I have it set on leather. It should come with, I believe it's normal, yep. So when you first open this up it'll say normal. Uh, if you're working on a specific uh, fabric type and you want to digitize for that fabric type you can come in here and you can set the fabric type and it'll change some of the defaults and underlay and density for you um, so when you start digitizing here we have our default default palette my default software that I or thread that I use is the Madeira, Madeira Poly Neon and let's go ahead and select the right one that I use um, this will auto match thread colors on loading stitch designs, which is really nice because then when you print your run sheet, you're going to get the correct color codes. The theme uh, can either be light or dark. I prefer dark, but most people have it set at light. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it at light for now. That is one change that you have to close your software and open your software back up for it to take effect. Next, we'll go to the machine tab here. Um, I like to change this down to around 14 millimeters. You don't have to leave it. Um, that's just kind of what I like to do. Um, remove stitches. I like to remove stitches that are smaller than 0.4 millimeters, especially when I'm digi digitizing for 40 weight thread. If you're running smaller than 40 weight thread, like 60 weight thread, you can drop that number down. Um, what happens is you'll end up getting too many needle punct punctures in one spot and it can cause issues. Um, DXF defaults units are in inches in the frame out location. I leave it at the top. Here on the grid, sometimes I'll change my spacing. Right now I have it set at 4 millimeters vertically, 4 millimeters horizontally, and horizontal lines every 4 millimeters. As you can see over here, I use it as dash lines. Um, I don't really change very much of this. I leave that one alone here in our digitizing now these are some of the most crucial changes that I like to make right here is a big one input curve points with right click this makes it so when you're doing uh, design you can hold down when you have to hold down control click to make a curve node now you can just right click on your mouse one nice thing about this is that if you change this you can still press control click to do a curve curved node um, as well as right click so I like to change that it's a big one for me here in our complex mo fill, I like to have advanced. They're standard and advanced. Advanced gives you the option to set your stitch angle and your start and stop points right after you're done digitizing an object. If you don't have that turned on, once you put your start and stop, or once you digitize your object, it'll automatically fill. And then to edit those, you have to go over here to the node edit tool. So I found it's better to have it set as advanced already same with satin and run stitch the default angle is 45 degrees 90 or 135 I leave that at 45 degrees next we have our view um, the view tab there's not a lot here to change um, the one big thing here that I like is use left clicked on palette to apply color so by default if you select select a color um, and you try to left click on it, it's going to open up your color palette menu. Changing this makes it so now if you want to pick a color, you select your object and you just left click on it. And it'll bring that, um, it'll make that change. Then if you want to change your palette, you would right click. It just reverses those two buttons. And I found that that's one of the easiest and best settings to do. Um, it's very confusing when you're trying to change colors and you go down here and you left click and a box pops up. So that's where you would change that. We have our auto base, which I leave alone, um, and our color sort, which I also leave alone. And so those are the settings that I like to use with um, Chroma Inspire. I found that a majority of the digitizing uh, videos online, they use right click for setting curve nodes. So when you're watching other videos, 
um, and they don't quite make sense when you, they say to right click and you right click and nothing happens um, that would be why so again my name's Jeff I'm with EMB nerd and these are the settings that I like to have in Chrome Inspire